Well, what's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody is having a great Sunday. Um, I'm working on my morning video and uploading it and things, and I've got something that's really bugging the hell out of me. And I, I've got to talk about this because, you know, make no mistake about it. I, I am a person who likes to be motivated. When somebody ends up saying you cannot do something, I will literally do everything that I can to prove them wrong. Um, most of the time in my life, uh, my, my good friend, Alex, who I'm working on the house for his widow, um, used to call me FF, F up fixer, because he would say if something's effed up, he'll find a solution on how to, how to fix it. When I was working for this company, we did a lot of work at the Smithsonian and you can go see this thing today, um, at the... Indian Museum in Washington, D.C., right in front of the Capitol, they have this uh, section where it's like a giant TP inside of there. You know, it's like a huge wall. It's actually built in there. And in there, there's a statue of George Washington with the Indians because the Indians literally saved their ass during the French-American Indian War. And it was the partnership with the, the, with the Oneida Nation. And Disney's creators were going to be doing these cameras and things that would be able to tell the whole story on the interior of the walls. And so these cameras had to be hidden inside of it. And they worked on this project, the planning of this, for four or five years. And this bulkhead that had to be curved, but also had to be tapered up with the curves... That was going to hold two of the cameras and things like that. Had to have doors and ventilation built into it. And it also had to have the sign that was going to be kind of like tapered almost. I would say trapezoid, but that's two sides that aren't the same. But it's tapered and has to bend. And it needs to have a half inch reveal around it to follow the curves and everything. And they had several companies that were there to try and figure this thing out and they're just like it can't be done and i looked at it and i looked at the plans and i said the way the architect has it designed you can't build it like this and we had a meeting with the people at the smithsonian and things and we're um going through and i'm talking to the architect and i'm like look you're trying to make doors that open up on the inside that are curved that are tapered up i was like nobody can do that that it said that damn near is impossible to do that i said how about you end up having the doors underneath the bottom where it's flat and I said, the way you build it, I said, what you're going to have to do is we're basically going to need to go up here because it's not exactly all that is basically make it like an airplane wing. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead, we'll cut out a cardboard fitting for the topper part, and cut all the marking stuff on there, come down to the, the 20 inches it needs to go and then do another one. And then we build it like airplane wings. And it's like, okay, oh, okay. All right. I'm going to go back, get this thing designed up and I'll have the plans to you in a couple of weeks. By the time the plans came, I already had it built. That's the kind of stuff that I do. And here's the thing. You may remember when legal tampering appeared. Legal tampering appeared. This was what was on 105 The Fan with Mike Furrier. The green flag gets waved. It tells you that there were communications, extensive communications and negotiations before noon Eastern, 11 Central yesterday. So a lot of stuff happened. But but of all the stories, of all the moves, of all the releases, transactions, and trades, our most traffic story of the entire day, even though we didn't post until about 7 o'clock Eastern yesterday, was this Dak Prescott extortion case. That was number one of free agency? Number one. Number one on wow. the first day of free agency was the Prescott case. Mike, uh, kind of reset the story for us, if you could, please. Well, 
And I got the email yesterday from Levi McCathern's office. You've heard his name in connection to clients like Michael Irvin and Jerry Jones in some ongoing litigation, specifically involving Jones. And the the allegation generally is that there was an extortion plot against Dak Prescott. Now, when you read the lawsuit and the attachment to it, it started as what is very common in the legal profession. Before you sue someone, before you bring that case, it is customary but not universal to reach out to the person with what they call a demand letter. It's all in writing. Here it is. Here are the claims I'm going to make. Here is what we want in order to not go forward. If I recall correctly, and I think I do, the Deshaun Watson situation from three years ago started the same way, with a demand letter. And there were negotiations that went nowhere, and then a lawsuit gets filed, and the rest is history. So in this case, Dak Prescott received a letter dated January 16, accusing him of a sexual assault in February of 2017, laying out some of the basic facts, and then ultimately saying that barring a settlement, she'll go to the cops and file suit, and they want $100 million. Now, when I saw $100 million, I thought, this is above and beyond what anyone would ever reasonably expect, Mm. even though it's negotiable. That is a ridiculously high opener, and maybe that set off some red flags and maybe caused uh, a greater degree of zeal and effort to try to be able to prove that this was all fabricated, but that's the argument. The tables have been turned. They've taken this demand letter, and they've filed an actual lawsuit against the accuser and her lawyers saying it's fabricated, it's phony, it's false, and it's an effort to extort him with this threat that they're going to make him look bad and make this allegation public and paint him in a way that the facts don't justify. All right. So here's the thing. That was the first day of legal tampering. And after that, we saw, of course, the accuser was on the news. The attorney said Dak Prescott is garbage. All of these things. So this was the number one story when free agency went through. Now, this is where I have to give a shout out to the Cowboys Mafia. Specifically, Dak Attack. And, you know, I've started talking to to my man and stuff and things. And he started his channel. Much the reason that I started originally doing stuff on Facebook and Cover 32 because there was always so much bullshit that wasn't correct out there. There's always one side of the narrative and things like that. It's like, wait a minute, that's not right. And so, you know, we're, we're from our mama's basement and things like that. But, you know, we don't get the credibility and things like that, but that the talking heads do. And mind you. Mike Varello is the same guy who started off a firestorm about Des Bryant's tape that's going to be five times worse than Ray Rice. There might be a tape. In the same way Adam Schefter says, the Cow- don't be surprised if the Cowboys draft a quarterback in the first round. It's all bullshit to get you to watch. But now, Dak Attack, who has been doing his homework, where he doesn't have a whole group of people to work for him, has been following the case that you would think that the talking heads that said it was the number one story when Dak was being trashed, that there's news on it that's looking like the opposition is trying to dismiss their suit against Dak. Shout out to Dak Attack. And I'm going to give you a taste of this where he's done his work. And mind you, you can go to the Dallas County court system, because he he gave me the link. And and even an idiot like me, an idiot like me, can find all of this paperwork right there. But here's the thing. When it's bad news about Dak, it's all over the place. When it's good news or retraction, none of them are talking about it. Y'all remember that lawsuit Dak Prescott had to file due to extortion? And then the lawsuit that was filed. Am I being shut down by the Cowboys? 
Hold up. Out in response to his go. filing an extortion lawsuit, pretty much accusing him of SA. Well, yeah, we got an update on that situation. And I'm sure a lot of the people that were ready to dance on the grave of Dak Prescott are going to be upset with this news. What we have here is a notice of non-suit without prejudice from the plaintiff, Victoria Shores, in her civil suit against Dak Prescott, accusing him of SA and essentially trying to get some more bread up out of him. Here's what it says. To the honorable judge of said court, now comes plaintiff Victoria Shores and moves to non-suit the above captioned cause number without prejudice. Plaintiff respectfully requests the court grant said motion respectfully submitted by the law office of Bethel Zihai, which is one of the lawyers involved in this case on the plaintiff behalf, or really the defendant's behalf in the extortion lawsuit, along with Yoel Zihai, which is quick, funny story. This guy actually went to my college at the time that I was there at UTA. <laughs> and even back then he was looked at as the kind of dude that you wouldn't really put a lot of trust into because a lot of people actually felt like this dude was one of those people that you don't want to hang around too, too much as far as him being like a sneaky, snaky type of person, right? So just a very interesting little backdrop on the lawyer here because he did go to my college at the same time I went there and we both were involved in various organizations on the campus and I know of him okay I, I knew of this dude before this lawsuit dropped which is why I was so sure that this was some ambulance chasing BS and essentially what we just read was a notice of non-suit without prejudice what does non-suit without prejudice mean? I'm going to show you real quick. He's done his Google work. Search. When a court dismisses a lawsuit with prejudice, it marks the end of that claim for both the plaintiff and defendant. The plaintiff can neither bring the case back to court nor take it to a higher court. On the other hand, a non-suit without prejudice refers to temporarily dismissing a lawsuit by the plaintiff. So essentially when this happens, it usually means if you are served a notice of non-suit, it may come as a relief. Even if it is without prejudice, which this one is, chances are good the plaintiff does not have enough supporting evidence to pursue a claim against you in court. In other words, the weak claims made in the original petition to Dak Prescott and his legal team they can't be supported. And we actually have the documents here. And I want to take a deeper look at this real quick, especially since we have some sort of finality to this. I want to kind of take a deeper look at some of the documents that we have on hand um, as far as the actual official court documents with this case. There you and go. then I'm going to go into a deeper discussion about how irresponsible it was for 105.3 to do what they did, especially in light of this news. So this is the original petition. This is Dak Prescott's petition against... We're going to leave it right there because we need to, and I, I, man, I'm so proud. I am so proud of Dak Attack. He is growing like crazy, and he is definitely one of the young guns that are out there right now bringing you the news. So when they tell you, when they tell you that we're nobodies in their mama's basements, that they've got their journalism degrees and they work for the big radio stations and this, that, and the other. <sighs> Remember who found this information first. And we're still waiting because the interesting part on this is, is my man ended up sitting on this information for a couple of days to see if anybody would come out with it. And as of yet... None of them have. They ought to be ashamed. If you're going to bring the bad news on somebody, bring the good news. And Mike Farello, we're still waiting for the tape and or an apology to Des Bryant. I'm Mark Holmes, and as always, I appreciate you guys. Peace out.